Yes, celebrities like, post, and retweet things they shouldn't, just like the rest of us, except that millions of fans witness their explicit trolling or secret illegal fetishes. Don't believe us? These stars prove that when you're famous, sometimes social media silence is golden. Vanessa Hudgens won fans around the world with her breakout role in High School Musical. But when the COVID pandemic spread across the world, things got a little less Disney. After Americans were advised to avoid bars, clubs, gyms, and crowds, Hudgens instead suggested on Instagram Live, even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are going to die, which is terrible, but inevitable? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this right now. Well, you know you've made it when Piers Morgan writes a whole Mail Online column slamming you as a, quote, selfish millennial. One Twitter user predicted her career would be over afterward, but Hudgens quickly apologized to her more than 43 million followers. Still, she's gotten the social media side-eye ever since. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Amanda Bynes was that girl. She was only 12 years old when she landed her very own skit series, The Amanda Show, and her career only skyrocketed from there. But by 2012, the girl once named one of Teen People's 25 hottest stars under 25 seemed to be walking on thin ice. The star announced she was retiring from acting and was involved in a series of DUIs and fender benders. As many started to voice their concerns for her well-being, being, Bynes remained adamant that she didn't have a problem. She even went so far as to tweet President Obama to fire the cop who arrested her. Bynes' every thought and inclination were being shared by her via Twitter. Who could forget her infamous tweet about rapper Drake and her private parts? And the bizarre time she claimed Chris Brown attacked Rihanna because she was, quote, ugly. Bynes was soon dropped by her management, and her once blossoming career lay in tatters. It was later revealed that, at the time, Bynes was suffering from bipolar affective disorder. She publicly apologized for her tweets. When Caitlyn Jenner came out to the world, one person we never expected to have a problem with it was Nickelodeon's Drake Bell. The former child star rose to fame with hit shows like Drake and Josh and starred alongside Amanda Bynes on The Amanda Show. The wholesome teen idol was funny and cute, and he even had his own band. But after Jenner posed for Vanity Fair with the headline, Call Me Caitlyn, Bell defiantly tweeted, Sorry, still calling you Bruce. After being called out by the LGBTQ community, Bell doubled down on his statement, tweeting, I'm not dissing him, I just don't want to forget his legacy. He is the greatest athlete of all time. Chill out. But the fact that Bell referred to Caitlyn as he and him only incensed social media even more. It wasn't long before Bell deleted his tweets and apologized for his, quote, thoughtless, insensitive remarks. Sky Jackson won our hearts as the adorable Zuri Ross on Disney's Jessie. But her sweet girl-next-door image came under attack after a number of social media scandals. A Finsta is a fake Instagram account where you fail to disclose your real name. The account basically gives the user free reign to say anything, without their good name being drawn into controversy. And according to rapper Bad Baby, Jackson revealed on her Finsta account that she had a crush on rapper NBA Youngboy, who just happens to be Baby's ex. This ticked off Baby, since Jackson had apparently slammed her for getting a tattoo of his name on her face. Baby then took to Instagram stories to blast Jackson as a, quote, Disney thought. Jackson was forced to get a restraining order after Baby threatened to beat her up, but later dropped the case. A few months after that, former Kardashian insider Jordan Woods shared a cryptic message online, blasting someone for coming for her little sister Jody. Many assumed it was Jackson, as rumors had circulated that Jody was dating Jackson's ex, Jules Smith. Jackson denied the allegations, but many started giving her the side eye, especially after a TikTok user accused her of bullying her at dance school. Who didn't have a soft spot for Jason Biggs after he suffered for his art and became intimate with a warm pie? But in a case of art imitating life, the actor has been very open about his own explicit misadventures. His wife, Jenny Mullen, revealed in her memoir, I Like You Just The Way I Am, that she once hired a sex worker for Biggs for his birthday. He says it didn't go as planned, explaining on The View, it took three ladies over the course of different days. Let's just say that I didn't complete the mission. I might have a problem. But it's what Biggs said on Twitter that caused him to land in hot water, with Nickelodeon, no less. 
In 2012, Biggs was getting his politics on by watching the Republican National Convention, and the actor made some highly inappropriate and sexualized comments about Jana Ryan and Ann Romney in a series of deleted tweets. At the time, Biggs had just signed on to voice Leonardo in Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. The network responded in a statement, Nickelodeon does not support or condone the use of graphic or vulgar language on any of our platforms. If you enjoyed Disney's Aladdin, you heard the voice of Gilbert Gottfried as Iago the Parrot. Gottfried's comedic talents landed him a role on season 6 of Saturday Night Live. But comedy is, of course, subjective. And most would agree that Gottfried missed the mark when he made fun of the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan in 2011, killing almost 20,000 people. Not long after the incident, Gottfried sent out a host of inappropriate tweets. He later apologized for his outrageous comments, but was fired from his role as the voice of Aflac Duck, thus bringing closure to a horrible tragedy. In 2017, Gottfried caused even more social media outrage when Wendy Williams accused an unnamed comedian of groping her live on set. It didn't take internet detectives long to put two and two together and point the finger at Gottfried. James Franco was once the darling of Hollywood, but despite scoring rave reviews in Pineapple Express and 127 Hours, rumors of Franco's offset behavior began circulating online. Busy Phillips, Franco's co-star on Freaks and Geeks, alleged in her memoir, This Will Only Hurt a Little, that he physically assaulted her on set. But the tide began to turn against Franco in 2014, when he was caught messaging 17-year-old Scottish student Lucy Claude. Franco slid into her DMs after she tagged him in a selfie after watching him perform Of Mice and Men on Broadway. Although the age of consent is 17 in New York, the actor drew criticism for asking Claude if he should, quote, rent a room for them. He later issued an apology on Live with Kelly and Michael, admitting, I'm embarrassed. I'm just a model of how social media is tricky. In 2018, Franco was also accused by five women of misconduct, which he has denied. There were people that were upset with me, and I needed to listen. That 70s show star Ashton Kutcher learned the hard way that a little bit of context before you tweet your rage to millions goes a long way. In 2011, Joe Paterno's once glittering career as head coach of Penn State's Nittany Lions ended in disgrace. News broke that Paterno, alongside several aides, covered up child abuse by assistant coach Jerry Sandusky. Their aim was to protect the school's celebrated football program and avoid legal trouble. But for an apparently clueless Kutcher, who happened to catch a headline noting that Paterno was rightly fired, he reacted with fury. He tweeted, How do you fire Joe Pa? As a University of Iowa football fan, I find it in poor taste. Of course, Kutcher was dragged all over Twitter and back again, leading the star to quickly delete the tweet, then post, Her Joe is fired. Fully recant previous tweet, didn't have full story. He further apologized for his tweet on his personal blog, but the damage was already done. Unable to take the bombardment of Twitter trolls coming for him, Kutcher handed over his account to his team. Actor Army Hammer won rave reviews for David Fincher's The Social Network, and he secured an Oscar nom for Call Me By Your Name. But rumors of the real Army Hammer had begun to emerge. On Twitter, Hammer was seen liking various BDSM posts and BuzzFeed even questioned whether his quote, white male privilege awarded him numerous chances in Hollywood after a series of box office bombs. I want to give you what you want, but I don't know what you're talking about. But in early 2021, an Instagram account leaked shocking messages Hammer had sent various women, while he was still married to the mother of his children, Elizabeth Chambers. The star spoke candidly about his love for BDSM, cannibalism, and assault. Fans also noticed he was following certain BDSM hashtags. A woman Hammer dated for four months also came forward and claimed he branded her by carving his initial A into her skin. In March 2021, another woman accused the actor of assault, which Hammer denied. The actor was dropped by his management team and forced to bow out of the film Shotgun Wedding alongside Jennifer Lopez. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.